first violin Spanish violin tutorial video hello everyone how are you guys so in this video we're going to talk about all the specific details that you need to know in order to be able to play the piece Spanish violin now this video as you can see right here is just for the first violin section so there's going to be separate videos for each of the pieces that we're going to play explaining all the details including the key signature, time signature, articulation, um, different vocabularies, different terms such as pizzicato, arco, bowings, and things like that. <clears throat> now the good news is that all these seven pieces that we're going to perform are very similar as far as what their key signatures are and what notes you actually have to know to be able to play these pieces. So you're gonna hear a bunch of different things that's going to be fairly the same throughout all these seven, piece, seven pieces. So starting with Spanish violin, this is specifically for first violins. As you can see, first of all, our time signature is three, four. That means you have three beats per measure and each beat gets a quarter note, right? Now look at your key signature right here. Two sharps, F and C. As you know, key signatures um, stay effective till the end of the piece unless you see an accidental during the piece or you see the key signature actually change, which we don't have any of the change key signature in, um, on all of our pieces for this concert. But sometimes you may see some accidentals, which are going to be natural signs. So, as you know, P-I-Z-Z -Z stands for pizzicato, which means plucking your strings. Now, just as a review, this is how you pluck. You hold your bow in your hand as you're plucking, since the pizzicato that you're going to be doing is only for a few measures. However, if you had to plug for, let's say, five lines, or in some cases, there's a piece for cello, actually, that has to plug for the, plug for the entire page. In that case, you're not going to use your bow. You just rest your bow on your music stand and then pluck. But for first and second violins, this is how you pluck. You simply grab on your bow and then you release your thumb and index finger. Then you put the edge of your thumb under the edge of the finger uh, fingerboard, like right here at the tip of your thumb, right here, under the edge of the fingerboard and then you use the tip of your index finger and plug about an inch away from the fingerboard, like this. And make sure you plug sideways, which means you grab on the strings, pull it sideways as opposed to upwards. Sideways. Okay, first thing that I want you guys to pay attention to is this. The notes on the G string, as you see on the paper, we haven't been playing many pieces with notes on the G string, such as this one, B, which is third finger on G. This one is C, which is, I'm sorry, B, second finger on, on G, C, third finger on G. Now, if you remember, we have F sharp and C sharp as our key signature, which means all the Fs and all the Cs are going to be sharp, including this one. It doesn't necessarily mean which C. It's going to be every C that you play. For instance, you have one C that's third finger on G. The other C, that second finger on A, these are the two Cs that you've learned so far. So if you have a C sharp, it applies on both. It becomes high second on A and high third or sometimes low fourth on G string. Okay, I would suggest you guys to try both ways. Every time you have a C, this one, the middle C on G string, try it both ways using your high third, which the tape is going to be the white tape after blue. The blue tape is for C natural, the white after blue is for C sharp. 
Try both ways. Some people would find it a little bit easier to use high third. Some people would find it easier to use low fourth. Regardless of which finger you use, it's going to end up on the same exact tape. So don't forget, the tape for C sharp on G string is the white after blue. So you start plucking like this. C sharp or low four. Right? Next word. Let me actually explain this as well, just as a reminder. You see this weird sign that looks like a stretched rest sign, like a whole rest almost? Um, they use these signs for multiple measures of rest, right? Instead of writing three bars of rest, they just fill in one bar and put a number on top. So this number could be any number. In this case, you only have three, which means you have three measures of rest, just so you know. Next word, arco. If you remember, arco means playing with your bow. You would only see this word if there has been a pizzicato beforehand. If you start a piece without any of these two words, it's automatically arco, right? Just like natural signs, sharp signs and flat signs. If a note doesn't have any signs on it and there is nothing on the key signature, they are, they are assumed to be naturals. They're all natural notes. Natural signs only appear if there are sharps or flats before them, right? That's how you make something to go back to normal. Same with this, if you will, arco would be considered the normal way of playing. Pizzicato is plucking. So you wouldn't see arco unless there is pizzicato before arco. So, um, as we've talked about this before, we're not going to be doing any of the ties. However, however in case of having any slurs, which you don't have anything in this piece, we'll try to do the slurs but not any of the ties for now, which means you would just play each measure separately. You don't connect them in one bow and hold it for six beats. You play this note for three beats, next for three beats. Another reminder, dotted half note stands for three beats. Dot adds half the value of the note that it belongs to back to it. So if it's on a half note, half of half is one, dotted half is two plus one, which is three beats. If it's on a quarter note, half of one is half, one plus a half is one and a half, so that would be three eighth notes or one and a half beats. So, these notes are fairly simple. You've played all the notes on D string and A string, so these notes should not be a problem at all. However, keep in mind that you have a key signature now, right? Usually, you guys get sharps as you play the piece. There is nothing on the key signature and you only get sharps as you play. Another way to write sharps for beginners so that you constantly keep um, getting reminded by Fs are sharp, like C is sharp here. But once you get used to that me method, you would only see key signature and you memorize these two and you apply it on every single F and C there is in any register. Doesn't matter if it's high F, low F, and so on. So, um, that's F sharp, C sharp, so, and then I, I second on D, I second on A, C sharp, C sharp, everything is very, very simple. And as you go through the entire piece, for the whole piece pretty much, you, you are playing all the notes on A and D string, except for the last line that you play some notes on G string again. And as you see, I've marked this. Make sure you don't forget the C here. Let me see if it's in the camera. Yes. Yeah. This C here is also sharp, right? Which is either third, high third, or low fourth. Now, one thing that I've always told you guys is that feel free to write clues, including sharps, bowings. I would not suggest to write the name of the notes anymore, but if you still need to write the name of the notes also, it's okay for the specific notes that you still forget. 
for a while, right? And don't forget to use a pencil. So then later on you would be able to raise it. <clears throat> but as far as writing sharps, even though they are already in the key signature, feel free to do so. Anything that would help you to play it the first time you look at it, to realize what note that is, the name of it, where it's located, what string and which finger. All those information has to come to you simultaneously and immediately. Otherwise, by the time you process all of that, it's going to be very late, the music flows, even, even though in this case, you actually play it very slowly, the speed is not quick, you still need to be able to process it much, much, much faster than the actual speed of the piece. So there is, that's all we can say about this piece. Um, there's only one more thing that I want to add, which pretty much applies on every single piece that I want you to practice on, which is the fact that not only you have to practice, but you have to practice in a specific um, way, which means if there are some lines, some notes, and that applies to every single piece you're learning, that you already know. I know it's fun to keep playing those, which is good, but first learn the ones that you don't know, which is not fun. Most students tend to actually ignore the things that they have to know, they have to learn because it's difficult. Learning things you don't know is a lot more difficult than redoing things that come to you naturally, right? And each one of us have certain things that just would come to you naturally, like some students are very good with their intonation, some with their bowings, some with reading notes, some with more. Um, work on the specific things that you need to learn, that you need to work on. And I would strongly suggest to only work few measures at a time. After a while, you'll be able to extend that limit. You would be able to work one line at a time and then few lines at a time. You will get there, but you have to start with few measures. And if it's easy, then move on to the next few measures, then learn the next two. So that's all I have to say about this piece. Don't forget to practice it daily, all your seven pieces, at least a few times every day, so then you keep getting reminded on how to read the notes on of those pieces. Have fun practicing.